Hi, in this video, we are going to learn how to complete a manufacturer application form for medical devices. Um, you will need internet, a classification guidelines, you will need the membership for GMDN agency and the original equipment uh, manufacturer details if there's any of the products that are being listed. So we'll start off with uh, internet on the SAPRA website. To access the SAPRA website, you uh, search on Google sapra.org.za and this is where the navigation will take you. And on the SAPRA website, you'll click on operational units, scroll to medical devices and forms and click on license application, medical device manufacturer and click download latest version. You can select where you want to save the application form and then while it's downloading you can go back to the medical device landing page click on guidelines and click on medical guideline for classification of medical devices and ibds and download the latest version uh, on this guideline uh, you can uh, use it from the internet or you can download it for future use so back to the form once the form is downloaded you'll notice that it is logged for editing so you are only required to complete the sections that uh, require completion so there is multiple tabs, as uh, you may have seen on the distribute application form as well. And information will be completed based on um, activity. Some sections are mandatory, some sections may not be. So um, information will be completed based on the manufacturer's uh, activities. So we'll start with the manufacturer name. We'll type in the manufacturer name. And then the name of the authorized representative as appointed by the manufacturer. and their contact details as well. The manufacturer's business names and registration details that can be completed easily and any licenses that have been issued either under the Medicines and Related Substances Act or the Hazardous Substances Act can be indicated here. If the manufacturer indicates yes, then they will need to provide uh, those licenses or certificates together with the application when they submit. If they indicate no, then that information will not be required. And then moving to the physical business address, this is the address that will be shown on the license. So the manufacturer will need to complete this address correctly and in full so that the correct information is captured. And the province is a drop down, then they can select and so forth. And the license holder is based on. Um, the appointment by the manufacturer. So this information also can easily be accessible. I'll quickly move now to the devices that are being manufactured by the applicant. On this section, we have uh, the original equipment manufacturer will require the GMDN code, the GMDN descriptor, the name or group or family of the device, the activities that are being performed and the risk classification. And based on the risk classification, will require the details of the originating country if the, the local manufacturer is not the original manufacturer. So on this section, I did mention that we'll need a membership with the GMDN agency or the information can be accessed from the original equipment manufacturer. Uh, for a local manufacturer, then they would need to sign up with the GMDN agency and um, or log in if there's already an existing membership. And let's say, for example, that the product that is being manufactured is an examination glove. So on the original manufacturer details, we'll indicate... And then the GMDN code of the glove. You'll find it on the GMDN agency as indicated here. And then the code can be pasted there. And the descriptor is also indicated there. And then the name or group of family of the medical device. The manufacturer here can indicate the commercial name or the generic name of the product. And the classification, which can be acquired from the classification guideline can also will also be required so in this case i will indicate class a and then the activity is performed so some manufacturers will be importing the product then package it so in that case then they would need to indicate what activities what specific activities are being performed if they're doing the full uh, manufacturing chain then they'll indicate manufacturing if it's only primary packaging or secondary packaging or servicing then it will be indicated as such and then we'll move to the in vitro diagnostics being manufactured in South Africa. Uh, the definition of uh, in, an IVD is available on internet or on the medical device regulations and can be accessed there. So on here, the information required is similar to the non-IVDs MD manufactured in SA. The only difference is under classifications, they would be 
REO that refers to research use only. So the manufacturer would indicate um, the in vitro diagnostics that are being manufactured at the site based on the activities that are listed here. And then moving to the non-IVDs imported into the country, if any of those products that are listed under uh, section one, section 4.1 are also imported, then those products can be listed here. The original equipment manufacturer that in this case will still be the same company. And then the GMDN code, the same. Then the risk classification A, and then the address of the international manufacturer and the registration details if the product is a class C or class D device. So any other products also that are being imported can also be listed here for uh, information on how to complete uh, the import site. Then you can refer to the video on um, completing the distributor application as it refers to import, export and distribution. And then on section 4.4, this is the same information as well. Um, the only difference as well here will be the research use only and um, WHO pre-qualification, which is now required for certain in vitro diagnostics. So all the products which are in vitro diagnostics and are being imported by the manufacturer can be listed on this section and information can be uh, accessed for the risk classification from the guideline and GMDN information from the GMDN website. Now we'll move to the manufacturing site information. So if the manufacturer has outsourced the manufacturing activities, any of the manufacturing activities to a different site, then they need to provide the license, the medical device establishment license for that site. Um, if the site address is the same as the, the address on 2.2, then the, the manufacturer can just indicate that information here as well. Uh, say the site name is the same, then information will still be mandatory. And then the site address can be completed based on where the manufacturing um, activities are occurring and then complete if the quality manual has been enclosed and whether it has been submitted um, before yes or no and the quality manual number if it is applicable and the license number or any copy of the license obtained by the department of health for the premises if applicable and then the site contact which is the authorized representative or the designated personnel and the site usage uh, and if there's any other activities that are not connected to medical devices can be indicated here and then the activities that are being performed at the site starting with um, preparation of sterile products so based on the products that are being manufactured uh, in this case we have a class a we are manufacturing class a glove says so non uh, anti antimicrobial then on the site then you would indicate class a sterile yes and then the product is also non-invasive then you'll indicate yes and the product is inactive, then you indicate yes for the product that has been listed on section 4.1. And then on the nature of sterilization, if there's any of these activities performed, you can indicate either yes or no based on uh, what is being performed at the site and nature of product packed, packed or packaged, then this information can also be indicated if um, we are packaging the same product that has been listed or any of the product that have been listed under import, that information can be indicated here as either yes or no. And then all the other uh, packaging activities also can be indicated if this primary uh, labeling of primary containers, secondary packaging or labeling of secondary packaging that can also be indicated. And then other dosage forms manufactured or packed um, as uh, performed by the manufacturer, they can indicate is either yes or no and other specific processes or activities um, to be indicated. And the nature of medical devices being serviced or refurbished, uh, this is uh, based on equipment or units that uh, require servicing or refurbishment after use. So if they are any of the products that are listed as either uh, on either 4.1 or 4.3 and they do require um, this to be performed then they would need to be indicated here on uh, section 14 and then the site name where analytical testing activities is performed um, information needs to be provided and if this is a, a an outsourced activity then the license of the testing site uh, needs to be provided as well okay the next tab is the storage site information on here. Again, if a third party is being used for storage, then their license will need to be provided and um, the license details can be provided also on this section. But if the manufacturer is storing medical devices at the manufacturing site, then they can indicate the same information that is either on 1.2 or on section five under manufacturing site information. And then if there's a different site contact other than the authorized representative, then they can indicate the contact details of the, 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 the personnel that is 
uh, located at that site. And then the site usage, if there's anything um, other than handling of medical devices as well, then that information can will need to be provided the facilities and other equipments on site. And if um, there's activities relating to import or export, if the manufacturer has listed that they are importing either IBDs or non-IBDs, um, then they would indicate here that they are importing. And if they are exporting, and they indicate TS here, that would mean that um, Section 17 will now need to be completed. If there's no medical devices listed under 4.3 and 4.4 for import of um, non-IVDs and IVDs, then this section can remain no. And if the applicant or the manufacturer is not exporting medical devices, they can also indicate no for export, meaning Section 17 will not be mandatory for, for completion. So since uh, in this case we have indicated yes, then that would mean that um, Section 17 would need to be completed and... Um, then we'll need to list the product that is being exported. Say for argument's sake, it's the same product that has been listed on section 4.1 and 4.3, then I will just list it on, on section 17. And for argument's sake, we are exporting to Zambia, then we'll just indicate yes. And then the completion also on IBD, MD that are being exported process is the same. However, under classification, it will uh, list research use only. And then now on activities, activities are a summary of uh, manufacturing activities, import activities, and other activities. So on the product list on section four, uh, it was indicated that there is um, a class A product, which is a glove. It's single use, then it will indicate yes. And it's also non-invasive, yes. Then all the other non-applicable activities will be indicated as no. Then it is not an active device, then no. It is an inactive device, yes. It's not a contraceptive. No, it's not a combination. And other sterile medical devices, it's not other. Okay, and then non-sterile manufacturing, the product being manufactured or listed on section four, it's a sterile according to what has been provided. So this section will not be applicable. And then moving to manufacture of in vitro diagnostic, there was nothing listed at that section. Then it would in be indicated as no. And then packaging activities, um, since it was indicated on section 4.1 that um, manufacturing in totality is performed, then packaging will be applicable. Then we can just indicate yes. It's not relabeling. Cuttoning or secondary packaging, yes. Assembly of kits, no. And then testing activities, um, nothing was indicated on the manufacturing section. Then the manufacturer can also indicate based on what is being performed. And now we move to import activities and then import class A medical device. Yes. And then there is no other medical devices that have been listed. Then in this case, under import, it will be no throughout. Moving to distribution. Um, distribution of class A medical device. Yes. And then the other classes, no. And then now export with reference to section 17.1. It will be yes for class A medical devices and no for everything else. And now moving to um, 18.5, which is materials that are handled or stored at the site. And then the medical devices are stored at the license holder site, yes. If a storage site is not being used to store devices, and then, uh, and then other characteristics of the devices that are being handled at the site can be indicated. If there is nothing, you can indicate no. And then moving to personnel information, um, this is at the discretion of the manufacturer However, the section is mandatory. The authorized representative is the same authorized representative on section one under general information. So this cannot be two different people. And then the personnel will have control of manufacture, export, distribution, and um, manufacture, import, distribution, and export. And quality control or quality assurance will be mandatory as they will appear on the license. And then the quality management system information, this is where the manufacturer can indicate what um, systems they have um, implemented and have already obtained accreditation for and what is the scope and what is the details of the certification. And then under declaration, the manufacturer will declare based on the information that is provided here or the processes that are in place and uh, also uh, just confirm that the information provided is correct and is current. And then this form will be required to be PDF'd in the sense of uh, converting to PDF electronically, initialing each page and signing on um, section 19 and section 23 by the uh, authorized representative or um, it can be printed on the section, or all the sections can be printed out um, initial each page and the section 19 and 24 can be signed off and the form can be scanned into a PDF and it will need to be submitted. The Excel application does not require any signature to be um, put on it as the signature should be on 
the PDF version of the application form. That's about it on how you complete a license application form to manufacture medical devices. Thank you.